Well, Magdalena, kick us off. Okay, so um, I'll just go briefly, um, like you can see in the agenda, just through the goals of the call. So today I will be talking about, and I'll, um, later on in the call, showing you how to use conditional questions. Um, I'll explain how to create conditional questions and how to put together the template and just show you um, how you have to set really your questions um, so the conditions will appear to you. Um, but like I said, we'll we'll get this a little bit after after hopefully some discussions with you. Um, yeah, like last time, um, we basically thought that it would be uh, interesting to hear if any of you have already some experience on using conditional questions. Um, so if you if you have tried it and have found certain things, please uh, like type in the chat or in the note taking document or um, you can unmute if you want to be in record and let us know how that went. Um, I have to say I'm I'm slightly scared of conditional questions as well. Every time we need to do user acceptance testing. Uh, for DMP online uh, um, and that comes up um, sitting there not entirely sure myself how I need to do it um, and where to start. So um, yeah, just be interesting to hear if, if some of you have tried it, um, how, how it went, what you find most difficult, but then on the other end, you're in a, a demo session to be shown how to do it. So it might be that if not, um, not not tried it yet yourselves and you're actually here to learn so that's perfectly fine as well but if anyone has tried it and would like to share um, please do type or unmute well there is a message from you Akim uh, yes I have tried it and appreciate it but would like to would like more use than just removing and notifications. And I think we can take a note of this. We will have a little part uh, where after the demo, Patricia will discussing some further upgrades to this functionality. Um, but we can just copy and paste this into the suggestion. Oh, no, not the link, but I'm, I'm taking note of this. So useful functionality, but room for improvement. That's always good to know. Could I kind of just listen for a second here? Um, I think it's worth saying at the outset that um, we don't know whether, we don't know for sure whether the, the whole model that we have for conditional questions is actually what we want in the long term. Um, so we put the conditional questions in there as much as an experiment as anything else to see how people use them, to see how they experimented with them, to see what they found good or bad about them. And with the view very much of revising that in the future. Um, so anybody who has experience and has feedback that they can give us is going to be extremely useful to us going forward. Yeah, thank you, Ray. I was like, um, uh, I would have put that uh, to, uh, or mentioned that in the potential changes and upgrades that like we found. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> it's fine. Um, it's, uh, um, we can basically um, pick that up in, in a bit more detail later that uh, we, we know they are not the easiest thing to use at the moment because the uh, yeah, Magdalena will, will talk you through them in um, in a bit that the, the, the notch shake is maybe not exactly what uh, you'd expect. So um, we can come back to that after the demo again um, for those who haven't tried it yet, just to get your first reactions um, if you find anything weird or see room for improvement. Um, because yeah, uh, um, as Ray just mentioned, even on our, our side, um, we are aware that um, it's not the easiest feature at the moment. Um, so any any input you can give us after this on 
how you could see this more useful um, and improve in the future. We'll definitely note that um, on our end and, and consider if the implementation is an easy one or um, as Ray just mentioned, if it needs actually a complete remodel of um, the, the, the concept, the un underlying logic um, as well. Uh, we've got a few more uh, comments in the chat, uh, interest in how institutions have used them. Um, that's a good point. And maybe Magdalena, something to, maybe you can do a follow-up if someone tries to set them up after this call and how that works. So it's something that we um, could pick up as part. Um, I think a follow-up will be good in there. Yeah, either as a session or in, as part of our regular drop-ins to, to pick that up with people again and maybe some of blog posts um, from institutions that have set it up. Um, and yeah, a lot of people who've basically played with it but not have set it live, if I understand that correctly. Um, or at least like the idea and would like to use it. Um, good, thank you so much for, for that bit. And um, we note that and I hand over to Magdalena for the moment to actually show you how it's done um, and how the logic works. Let me just move things around before I hit share my screen. Green, so I'm sharing the right thing. And oh, two seconds. Share screen. I'm quite new to using Zoom, so um, I, I hope I'm clicking on the right things here. But like we said in the previous session, we are trying out um, different platforms. So hopefully it's going to work well. Um, okay, so. I hope you can see my screen now. Uh, you should be able to see BMP online. Can you just confirm? Because I'm not entirely yep. sure what I'm doing. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Um, okay, so let me just move a few things around. So I have the whole screen in the front of me. Okay, and we are set to go. So, um, Maybe some of you haven't used it just yet and don't have as much information. So what I will do in this demo session, I'll just explain what conditional questions are because it might be a brand new concept for some of you joining this call this morning. Um, I will then go through how to set the conditions. I won't be creating the whole template, but I'll explain the logic. I'll show you on which type of questions you can set conditions. And we'll also go through the examples of what conditional questions can do for you. And we will also just show at the end um, what the user is able to see once you set the conditional questions. Um, so for those of you who are not very familiar with this concept, it's one of the latest new functionalities um, where we were setting the conditions on your template. We either allow you to reduce the number of things you ask um, in your DMP by skipping questions. And this can be useful, for example, if um, you determine that the research project is not creating or using any sensitive data. And this might mean that in your template, uh, you don't need to ask any detailed questions around ethics. And when someone is filling up uh, the DMP, and with having these conditions set up, they'll be just able to skip the set of these questions. Um, also, um, you can set the conditional questions. Um, once you draft your entire template um, and you, you, answer, you, you set these in the answer format, which has to be in radio button, check boxes, or drop downs. And I'll show this to you shortly. And this might seem, I think this is the sometimes quite counterintuitive, um, but in order to add conditions, you need to have the other questions saved in order to specify that you wish to remove them. So basically you need to start with all the possible answers 
And with setting the conditions, you would be basically able to remove them as your researchers will go through them. But I'll show you how it works. And you also need to save the questions and set the options before you can apply the conditions. But I'll just go. I just want to explain a little bit the background of this. So what we, how we start adding the conditions, you have to go into the templates. And like I said, I'm not going to create, I already prepared a very brief template for this tutorial, but you need to start by creating your whole template and basically adding all of the questions which you need to ask. And what you do, um, you just, like I selected, I'll just show you again for those who might have missed it. I just click here on actions and I click here on edit. And I'm able now to enter my template. Um, and I now go into my template. So first thing I'm going to edit is that I'm going to add the conditions in the data collection, which I prepared before. And it was question number three, uh, where I was planning to ask the researcher whether they are going to collect any personal data. So I go to my question, I hit on edit, and you can already see that I um, set my answer format as a checkbox. But let me just show you, is the checkbox, drop down, or radio button. These are the three ones you need to set when you want to set your um, conditional questions answer format. And I, I just did quite simple answer format here, text, yes and no. And now once I saved my template and saved all of my questions, I'm actually able now to revisit because it's only now that this orange button allows me to edit the conditions. This wouldn't um, show to you um, as you're creating the template before saving it. And now um, there are two ways what the conditions can do. One uh, way which we can do is to remove certain answer. Another one is just to set an email notification. So in this case, um, are you planning to collect any personal data? I'm going to say that if the researcher is going to say no, this will remove the questions around ethics. So you can actually multiply uh, your selection. So I'm going to select that it's going to remove my question one, two, three, and four. And basically by me hitting on all of these, it means that the researcher will be skipping the whole section five that is set in my template around ethics. And now I would also like, if the researcher is going to answer yes, I would like this to add a notification um, and trigger an email, let's say to a GDPR office. So we can pretend this is a GDPR office email. Um, and I am going to say, I don't know, researcher collecting personal data. And you can basically just set whatever message you want here and set this email wherever you want it to go. So this can be, I don't know, if you are collaborating, it can be uh, sent directly to GDPR office, but it can be sent, I don't know, to the IT office. If I don't know the storage is going to be above a um, certain number or if the answer is, for example, said that they will need some special um, I don't know, um, archive for that or whatever the answer might be. Again, you might be just notified whatever the need is, but in this case, I'm just using this um, as a GDPR example. Um, so I'm going to just hit save. I'm not going to add any message. Um, and I go back. And you can see now that I set my conditions and question conditions. Now I can also see that if the answer is going to be no, the questions around the ethical issues are going to be removed. And if my answer is going to be yes, it's going to trigger an email. You can also say that if the answer is no, it's going to remove the question and it can also trigger an email, but it's just for the um, example purposes, I'm setting different conditions on these two. Um, so I'm going to now, since I just, edit some changes, I need to, you can see that now I'm presented here with this little red mark and 
many of you are probably already familiarized that this means that I added some changes, but these haven't been published for my um, researchers. So I need to go back to the actions and I'll just hit on publish changes here. And now I have been triggered um, saying that my template, template has been published and is now available to users. So I'll now pretend I'm a user who is going to use this template. So I'll just say it's a test plan and I'm not having any funder and I want to create my plan. And I'll just go straight into the question number three around the data collection. And I'm going to answer no. You can see that straight away they are triggered and the researcher is being told that this answer removes four questions from your plan. And you can now also see here that the ethics is grayed out. So um, we'll be just skipping these questions, which is great. And I'm going to say now that I'll, I'll answer that I'm going to collect personal data. I hit yes. And you can see here, it triggers the email to the email address, which you have specified. Um, so this is in a nutshell how it currently works, but we are open for questions and discussions. Um, so I think we might have received some messages as well in the chat. So I'll stop sharing now and um, we'll just get back to you now. Um, yeah, I see a raised hand from Joachim. If you, I don't know if you want to unmute. Yeah, okay. If you, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, one thing that seems to work, but I, I just make to sh want to make sure is that, I mean, when you set the conditions, they refer to a specific question uh, with a specific number. If afterward you have set the condition to refer to a question and you change the order of the questions, Will that reference still work so that the, the question, uh, it will refer to the, to the right question? It seems to work uh, as far as I've seen, but I want to make sure. <laughs> the answer to that, do you want me to jump in and answer that? Um, okay. It depends on how you rearrange the questions, is, is the answer. Um, there's a condition, there's a, you can only set a condition on questions which are going forward, okay? Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Because otherwise you can end up creating circular uh, yeah. links of questions. So if you rearrange questions, but you don't rearrange it such that the question being deleted comes before the condition, mm. then it will all work fine. Yeah. But okay. if, say you have question uh, say you have question three can conditionally yeah. remove question five yeah and then you rearrange it so that question five comes before question three yeah. then the condition will get wiped out okay and huh? you'll be warned about that yeah um, when you try and save it when you try and save the template mm -hmm. um, so it depends if it, we keep the condition if we possibly can Mm -hmm. But if you rearrange things so that you violate the, the order mm -hmm. of the condition and the question, then there's nothing we can do about it. At that point, we have to... Uh, okay, good to know. Warn you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, just to comment to uh, or attach to the question from Rosa in the chat. Uh, the thing is that also that... Um, if you want to adhere to the RDA DMP common standard, you have to have a some answer saying ethical, uh, that answers either yes or no to, or unknown to, to a question of ethical issues exist. So there has to be a yes, no, or unknown answer to to, to that question. <laughs> so um, if you don't have uh, any question uh, about ethical issues, then 
or, or in any answer or just a blank answer, uh, you won't be able to to uh, uh, adhere to the RDA DMP common standard. Yeah, I guess that was behind my question that uh, you can't just remove the whole ethics section if you uh, want to have a funding agency template that requires an answer on that question. So it would be great if you can, uh, I mean, the researcher can skip answering it, but you would need to have an autofill option uh, in when you set up the conditional question. It's if you say no to these questions, you will have an automatic no filled in to that section so that the researcher doesn't have to fill it out. But removing the whole section, that will make the plan useless if you want to send it to a funding agency. Um, that requires I, you to answer I, that. I, I haven't, to be honest, I didn't, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't think of testing this on a funder template, but Ray, I'm sure you will be able to fill me up here, but I don't think with founder templates, you would be actually able to skip uh, their core questions. Um, mm. I can I can confirm this after the call, but if a founder sets the template in a way, um, as far as I'm aware, like you can't add, um, you wouldn't be able to skip it. I'll, I'll have to, I'll, no, you would, you're, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. Mm. Um, but I guess what I'm after, it would be useful to have uh, another option than just uh, remove question. Sure. And that is to autofill that other question with this mm -hmm. value. Um, because that's usually the consequence. Uh, uh, I don't handle personal data, then there are no ethical issues. Um, that's the condition if there aren't any other ethical issues. So you would like to have a pre-filled answer to the question rather than removing the question. That would be a very useful feature. If you... I, th I, th I think that's an option that we could certainly look at adding. Mm, that would be great, I think, because that's what I had in my mind when doing a mm. the, template. The, the way we are handling this right now is to uh, have uh, a style sheet that uh, transforms the output, the JSON output from DMP online uh, from our template to a, 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 well, transforms it to a format that is compliant with the RDA DMP common standard. And of course you could have, uh, let's say if you uh, fill in this section, you could have a style sheet that says, okay, you, you have to have a, a, an answer saying just no to ethical issues. But that would be, uh, I mean, uh, uh, an extra step uh, and uh, it would be preferable to have it directly within the template. Okay, I, mean, I think that's really interesting feedback. And we'll need to, yeah. um, it certainly sounds like the kind of thing that we could um, look at extending it with uh, going forward. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely sounds interesting. I'm trying my best to to note these in the Q and A um, session section here, so we can do a follow-up and um, have that noted. So um, yeah, that definitely is the kind of feedback that we we want from, from uh, the session and um, that we were looking forward to getting from you. Yeah, would... because that would be useful for many questions if you fill in uh, like what size of data you have and what type of data we can like uh, from that conclude what storage is appropriate and suggest that as an autofill option for researchers. Um, so uh, yeah, it would be great to have an autofill option in many ways. Yeah, thank you. Noted. Um... 
Seeing as we're doing like Q and A already, are there any other questions um, and points that anyone wants to uh, pick up on? I, I, just a general question. I had some dialogue, uh, mail dialogue with you, uh, with the support, uh, and uh, one answer I got. Uh, for the further development was that some features that uh, is already taken uh, into and been implemented in DMP tool, uh, since you have a common roadmap with them in, in California, uh, are in the pipeline to be implemented in uh, DMP online as well. And I, I was just wondering how, it, how this is proceeding. If, uh, uh, and one of those was, was uh, precisely this uh, uh, further development of machine action ability uh, uh, according to the RDA DMP common standard. Uh, so since we're in the process of developing our own template, we just wouldn't want to do some much development work uh, that is won't be necessary with the new <laughs> when you implement the new roadmap. So that's why I'm, the interest behind my question. Uh, yeah, uh, I think we had a conversation about the machine actionable uh, um, API outputs. Um, mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, basically, we're de de uh, so it generally works as we're developing um, things together with um, the, the team in California, and um, but because they don't have like a subscribing user base with their own customizations, it's way easier to roll things out for them and just test uh -huh. it that than it is to, for us. We always have to um, make sure with new features that it doesn't break any functionality for any of our clients, um, uh, any of the tailoring that we've done um, for, for all of you. Um, when we, we just um, uh, add in a new feature for some of them, that's, um, that's easier for uh, some features. It's a bit more work to make sure that it doesn't break anything. Um, so at the moment, what uh, we're working on is basically um, carrying that big uh, backend infrastructure work on, on Rails 5 across to uh, the DMP online service and all the, the customized um, instances that we provide for you. And um, the updated API should be in that package. So we're kind of looking to get that done before Christmas, but we also realize that the, the situation left people with quite a bit of Days holiday left, so like we don't have as much, you know, stuff working on on things that we um, we might have planned to. But it's uh, it's on our um, uh, yeah timeline to be finished um, this this year. Um, and um, I think I also said that if you really want to to test something, we do have those features on on. Um, um, on like test and depth uh, options of DMP online. So if, you know, if that would help you in your own development to give things a look, to get a feel for it, um, you could get in touch. It's just like, you know, there's all kinds of development happening on those instances. And so it might, it's not going to be what you get in the end, but if, if that, you know, if a sneak peek uh, here and there would be helpful, um, let us know. So, but yeah, right, we can, you. we can pick that up. Um, uh, yeah. Are there any questions about conditional questions and what you've just seen? If not, you're always um, welcome to, you know, continue to add to the document or get in touch per uh, email and um, anything that comes after the session. Um, we usually put a blog post together and it's going to end up in the newsletter. So anything that um, basically comes after we wrap in that this call, we um, will add in 
in a written form to distribute to anyone. Um, yeah, but that's like on the Q and A um, on the potential changes and upgrades. Um, basically, that's the part where we look at the the tickets of uh, feedback that we have um, already open, things that um, you've already let us know where uh, things can be improved. Um, on conditional questions, it's uh, not that much. <laughs> um, but that is, I think, down to the fact that um, uh, it's a feature that many people are interested in, but haven't really played around with that much. So I think that's, um, yeah, not, not as core to all, all your daily workflows as some of the other parts of um, DMP online. And uh, thus, I think we just haven't had that, as many comments from you. I think the session was really, really useful because a lot of things came came out of this that we hadn't had on our list yet. So um, we will add that in. Um, so the, the bits that basically um, we know would be useful is to um, add conditional questions uh, to the preview of, uh, of templates, because at the moment that's not in there. So you need to actually publish the template for everyone to see those changes. And um, especially as it's not the most straightforward thing to set up. I think a preview of um, what you've done would be really useful at this stage. So we are aware of that. Um, and um, the other point is um, uh, some enhancements around the, the email functionality that Magdalena has shown. Um, so some ideas there include but at the moment, basically every time a user changes something on that question, um, it triggers an email to that uh, one of these emails that you have set up. So if someone is not entirely sure what they're doing and they're going a lot of back and forth between clicking yes and no, that means like, you know, and they're saving that all the time, then you suddenly get like five um, emails that, that basically are... Um, based on the same DMP because uh, the user is still um, heavily editing that. So um, the idea there is that like it actually uh, waits a bit until an email gets changed, um, uh, gets sent, sorry. Um, and sends that basically out once per day at the end of the day um, in uh, when, when all the, the DMPs are a bit more stable. So it doesn't create a lot of spam. And um, also our ideas about um, making it more visible to to the end user that there's an email sent that could potentially or that will trigger a follow up conversation and make that a bit more obvious. Um, so that that these are the the ideas um, basically that we have in our backlog. Um, we'll add the ones that you've raised. Uh, throughout the session to that. And um, yeah, then we have to basically do some deep thinking of um, how much we can easily implement with what we have at the moment, or if it needs a bit more uh, of a fundamental restructure and reworking of conditional questions to get that done. So um, that's, that's on us to do to the, the work here, but um, yeah, it was really, really useful from to get some of the insights from, from you on that. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't know whether we have any more questions um, from any of you. I didn't see anything in the document. No. Or in the chat. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is normally the time she decides to chat as well. I do have a little dog in the background uh, who's normally always quiet, but it's just during calls she decides to be a little bit more vocal and normally just because of a moving leaf in the front. Um, so, okay, so, but to be serious, if, if there's nothing else you would like to ask us today or nothing else um, you would like to point to, um, I'll just go through the few last points. Um, Please feel free uh, to invite others to our sessions and share the recordings and the 
an outstanding agenda that is available for everyone. Um, please um, share the notes and shout outs, please add, feel free to add anything else uh, you want the community to know below. Um, if there is anything else you can think of, please drop us a line to DMP online at dcc.ac.uk um, because there might be something you'll just think of later and be, oh, I should have mentioned this. Um, but this is all. Um, if you're not following us on the Twitter, please follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn account as these are quite good places to find out about our DMP online demo sessions and drop-in sessions and other news which we are currently working on. Other good place to go to is our monthly newsletter where we have the event sections where we also mention all of these and this is how I will be sharing the blog post from today. Join our community mailing list as well. Um, I'll be adding a link also in this agenda uh, to today's resource material and I'll, I think I'll be probably rather sharing these via email but I'll also share um, Vicky page on our github about how to do the conditional questions we will be adding the session into the YouTube as well so feel free to follow our demo session YouTube playlist so far we one video from last month so this is going to be our next one and I'll be adding the blog post as I said into the notes here we have decided we are going to skip December because it feels um it's going to be quite hectic due to many reasons and some of us they are going to be on annual leaves but the next demo session is going to be on the 28th of January January, um, half past 10 in the morning and, and the topic which we'll be having is quite useful um, as we tend to have um, loads of emails coming to our help desk about granting administrator privileges and you as an admin are able to do so and so we'll be explaining how to do that and difference between different privileges showing you uh, how to add these within your team um, so thank you all Thank you, Patricia, very much for your help, as always, to Ray for answering all your questions and for Diana. And have a lovely rest of the day. Thank you, everyone. Again, feedback is welcome. Also, if you prefer Zoom or go to meeting, um, it's the very basic things that will, will help us uh, arrange these going forward. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.